who's got you? And what do they want? You guys just throws your death notice. Now we play my way. Suicide Kings. Rated R. Howdy, folks. We're back with another episode of Unfinished Business Television that goes where? Diving deep into us, our chosen uh, movie of the week or of the episode. Um, I am your host, Jeff Gallishaw at Unfinished B2. With me, as always, is Andre Joseph of AJ Epics Productions. Does your mother sew? Mm. And if she does, it's... I'll stab you in the face with a siren. Okay. <laughs> um, that gives you a hint as to uh, actor we are who is in the film we chose this week. We're talking about 1997's thriller, um, Suicide King, starring the man of all time, Christopher Walken, with Henry Thomas. Jay Moore, Dennis Leary, Johnny Galecki of Big Bang Theory fame and Roseanne fame at the time, um, Jeremy Sisto, Laura Harris, eh, Laura San Giacomo, Cliff D. Young, eh, and a little actress some of you might remember from Heather's, Lisa Ann Falk. Yes, she played the cheerleader in that movie. Mm. And she's here in a small role. Um, and Sean Whalen, who some of you might remember from a movie called The People Under the Stairs. Um, this film is about a group of, I'm, I'm guessing, 20-year-olds. <laughs> they never really specify their age. <laughs> but they uh, decide to kidnap Christopher Walken's mob boss because Henry Thomas's sister was kidnapped due to gambling debts he owed. And their genius plan, since he doesn't have the money, was to kidnap uh, Christopher Walken's character and bargain him for the sister. And, you know, yeah, as you can see, great idea going in. This film is based on a short story by Don Stanford uh, named The Hostage. And it's directed by Peter O'Fallon and written by Josh McKenney. Gina Goldman and Wayne Rice. Um, I chose this movie. This is my pick because I don't think this film gets enough respect. I admit, just going through the storyline sounds stupid, but the whole thing uh, that keeps the film together is the chemistry and the reveals. Oh, I forgot Sean Patrick Flannery is in this film too, like one of the leads. And the funny thing is, that shows you how much you remember of him uh, in this film. But he seems to star in these, like, little indie films that could, like, the Boondock Saints and this, um, that, you know, I, most people who watch these films like them. I will admit, I love this film, mainly because of the cast, the chemistry. You know, the storyline's not that great, but just seeing them all together, including a ridiculous flashback scene of Christopher Walken trying to play young, where his hair is bigger, and strangely, he's paler. Which gets, is, there's no explanation for. This is something I watch a lot of on DVD repeatedly. Um, back when Jay Moore was a thing, <laughs> you know, um, when he was uh, looked like he was going to be the next big thing in movies. Um, <laughs> but I look, I really just love this movie because of Christopher Walken. Uh, you know, this is the epitome of his coolness. And he gets to sit down throughout the film because they have him locked in, or tied to a chair and somebody's genius idea to cut off his finger, <laughs> you know. And still, he acts the ass off of all these people who are surrounding him. Um, Andre, tell me what do you think of Suicide Kings, like how you came upon this film and what you think? I never saw the movie when it came out. I mean, I only saw it recently for the show. I remember seeing the posters at my Blockbuster 
And the thing that always caught my attention was that Henry Thomas was in it because I only knew Henry Thomas from E.T. I hadn't really seen him do anything as an adult. And I'm like, oh, he's in this movie with that guy from Young Indiana Jones Chronicles and <laughs> Henry Larry. That, that looks interesting. But I never got around to it. And then, of course, it happens to be on Tubi, so I check it out. And I'm kind of mixed because, again, I think Christopher Walken's fantastic in the picture. And every scene he's in he steals the show especially in that flashback scene and i even will say i really like dennis leary's part you know being the the right hand man that's looking for him and that scene where he confronts the one guy abusing his daughter and i guess he there's some incest thing going on there and basically he beats the living crap out of him and it's the one scene that he did not improvise he improvised yep. his entire yep. part and only that one scene was scripted so that says a lot about Dennis Leary as an actor and as a comedian as well. Um, and I like the chemistry of all the guys with Flannery, Thomas, Jeremy Sisto, I think is very good in it. He's sort of like, I guess, the medical doctor of the group. Um, and Jay Moore is Jay Moore, you know. <laughs> Without the his, <laughs> Yeah, he's got heavy bits, you know. Um, I guess the only thing about it, though, is like, I've seen this already it, 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 with Reservoir Dogs, the same I, kind of idea of all these guys in one room and bickering about a crime, and you're expecting something to pop off at some point that's all going to kind of start colliding with each other. Um, that's the only thing that kind of brings it down to me. It feels like it's one of those knockoffs, but it's one of the better knockoffs that I will say compared to, say, things that you do in Denver when you're dead or Two Days in the Valley, because this one at least... Seems like there was some effort to make it a little bit interesting with the flashbacks and then the twist ending. Um, yeah, I, it's really the Christopher Walken show for the most part and, and a pretty good acting exercise for the other actors. It, it, a lot of times it does feel like a stage play. And I like Cliff yeah. the Young too. He's always a welcome presence. Yeah, I'm, uh, just for shock treatment, Flight of the Navigator, Cliff the Young. Oh, FX. So I was happy FX. to see him. Um, an mm -hmm. early role for Brad Garrett, uh, also. Yeah, um, I was shocked to see him in there. Well, I mean, yeah, especially since you're just seeing it for the first time recently. Yeah. But I, at the time, I was, I didn't watch Everybody Loves Raymond, so I was like, who's that? Who's the tall, doofy guy? <laughs> and then find, oh, now he's big on television all of a sudden. Um, like I said, uh, Dennis Leary, he is excellent in the film. Um, I wish he would have brought some of those improvs to the Amazing Spider-Man when he was in it, you know. Um, I know, like, Jay Moore infamously does Christopher Walken impression. It would have been interesting if, for a scene, he mocked him and did an impression of him. Um, like I said, I can see where you, because, again, by now you've seen so many movies that are like it or before, but when it came out, I'm not going to say it was drastically original but it was like it still felt something that was fresh and new and original so that is why i still admire it and it's one of my favorite christopher walken performances um i don't know why all of you keep kicking things to do in denver while it's down uh, because i'm like give that movie some credit i'll admit it's a tarantino knockoff but geez it wasn't that bad yeah <laughs> Um, I mean, come on, you have Slara San Giacomo in this, even if it is a bit role. It's nice seeing her. Yeah, you don't see her anymore. Where is she now? She was on uh Barry the last season that um oh. it, she was good on it. Uh, you know, I remember like having like a thing, and she was so sexy watching Sex Lies and Videotape, even though I know nothing of what this film was talking about when it came out. I was just like <laughs> I just know she's hot. So that's the only reason I watched it as a 12 year old because I'm just like, yeah, yeah, what's with all the talking? Uh, where's all the sex? Uh, and I don't want to see Andy McDowell. I want to see that lady, uh, you know? Um, and then really after that, the only time I really remember seeing Laura San Giacomo in anything was like Pretty Woman. Uh, yeah, she had like the darkest role in the whole movie. Exactly. She was the real hooker. Uh, no, really. <laughs> but but she had good one-liners. Uh, and then, of course, Just Shoot Me, in the series. Another show I only really watch for her and Davis Bain. Um, <laughs> movie with Richard Dreyfuss? Doing like what? A comedy. 
Are you thinking of Madeline Stowe and Stakeout? <laughs> no, no. Okay, I, I I'm say, you're just throwing all these uh, Latin-looking ladies <laughs> with Richard. She's not Latin. Isn't she Italian or Greek? I oh, I always thought she was Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I thought she was Italian. Oh, see, who knows? Uh, I'm sure we can look it up, uh, but we're not <laughs> going to do that right now. But I mean, I like, I just have a love Jones for this movie. I mean, it's Johnny Galecki before he really became, I guess, famous due to Big Bang Theory. Um, you know, I, I thought Sean Patrick Flannery was on to bigger and better things. It's um, Laura Harris during her. Faculty years, I guess you could call it. Uh, you know, yeah, the love interest. This film has multiple endings. Uh, the one they went with is more vague, but there's one where he basically just shoots a hole in a boat and leaves them stranded uh, in the middle of the ocean. Um, I like that the film kind of has a dark heart, uh, you know, like, you know, spoiler alerts, like when he shoots the two, uh, the two thugs because they think the girl's in the room and it's like, Oh, it's a cat. <laughs> That's what. They're the saddest characters in the movie. They like get killed just for really nothing, doing their jobs. You know, even though there's that weird scene where he threatens his partner with a gun, where it was just like, okay, that dude's kind of fucked up. <laughs> um, but I, I'm sorry, I like this movie. I think it's creative. I. Won't say it's original, but I think it's a movie that a lot more people need to discover. And it's prime walking because it's one of the films, few films where he actually gets to play a leading role, you know, because usually it's, oh, he's the weird supporting character or he's a villain. And here he gets to be the villain, but yet also kind of the lead. And like you said, he's just wiping the floor with all of them, especially when he tells them how dangerous he truly is. And then they really realized, you know, the rapture. I'm glad Zach Galligan wasn't in this movie because since you're going to watch <laughs> just for Henry Thomas, you'd be like, wait, Zach Galligan? I got to see this now. You got to get all the Spielberg kids in here. Why not? That would have that would have been even perfect stunt casting. Like, hey, all the child stars that Steven Spielberg worked with, they're in Suicide Kings. But then Sean Afton and Michael J. Fox and Corey Feldman. You could actually, I mean, you couldn't do I don't it know Michael, where Michael J. Fox too. falls into it. But. Well, you could do a whole movie. Like, I would pitch that right now. Do an entire movie with all those Spielberg kids doing like an Expendables type of flick. But it's like a Spielberg movie with like space shit going on. <laughs> um, I don't know if that would fly because. Half of them are like retired or too old, <laughs> you know. Just because uh, Quay make a cocoon. Well, Corey Feldman is not coming back unless he can do the soundtrack. <laughs> so you know, it, with his Michael Jackson look, and uh, oh, um, <laughs> exactly that's why I said that's the only way he's coming back. Um, but like I said, I just really like this film. I. I, I know people know of this film, but this is a film that uh, they should really give a chance to back when they were still making real crime movies. Now, not so much. And I like that most of the violence is more threatened throughout the film, you know, because all the young guys are trying to look cool. And the only added really comedic element is when they go uh, to the casino and, you know, they're talking about this crazy blackjack dealer. And, you know, he's the, like, widow maker or the assassin. And it's like, it's Sean Whalen? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that I thought was inventive. But I I give this film uh, the highest praise. It's not a 10, but it's at least a solid 7. And, and a walking master class. Because I don't know how many of those we're going to get out of him. Uh, you know, he's getting older. And... So what would your final thoughts on this film be? Hmm? I give it a mild recommendation. I, I think it's good. It's not great, but it's got some solid performances, some really good moments, you know, walk-ins in top form. Um, I think it's a time waster. Okay, well, I think it's a little bit better than that, but we can agree to disagree. Um, do you have any last thoughts on uh, Suicide Kings? Nothing really comes to mind. 
Okay, so then that ends this week's business. But as you know, we always have unfinished business, especially here in the deep dive. And I say definitely check this movie out, especially if you're a huge walking fan. I mean, also if you're a Johnny Galecki fan. Uh, Sean Patrick Flannery, I'm sure there are a few of you out there. Hey, he's okay in the film. He's not the strongest element. Hey, Jay Moore, he's dating, you know, the co-owner of the Lakers. <laughs> so he's doing okay. <laughs> Between that and Air this year. <laughs> um, Jeremy Sisto, I know he was on Law & Order. I'm not sure if he's still on it. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of who else. Laura San Giacomo no, he's was on, on Barry. Or... Um, I don't know what Brad Garrett's doing these days other than those Jimmy John's commercials. <laughs> I mean, he was on Pete Davidson show, so. Mm. Cliff the Young needs more work is, if he's not retired. Is. So, uh, and that ends our look at Suicide Kings, directed by Peter O'Fallon. Until next time, we bid you adieu.